Hello, this is Melissa, the insurance exam queen. And I just wanted to do a quick video on the peril of falling objects and the peril of collapse as they can be a, a little bit confusing. And I have seen some tricky questions on the exam when it comes to these. So just to do a brief little explanation. So the first thing we wanna know, the key thing about falling objects is that it has to be from outside the house, outside the house. What this means is that the most common falling object is gonna be oddly enough, coming from an airplane falling onto the house. This is an actual thing. Things fall off of airplanes, break into the house, and that would be a falling object. But it could be anything. It could even be a spaceship. It could be a piece of construction equipment that flung through the air. The key thing about falling objects is it has to originate from outside the house. What they don't want to cover in falling objects is like if you have a chandelier, like a big fancy chandelier hanging and it falls and it causes damage, that's not covered. That is not, I mean, unless you have an open peril policy, but on most homeowners, it's usually like an HO2, you have a named peril policy they don't want to cover things falling in the house. Like I remember one time as the kids, we we were trying to make a welcome home banner um, in our house. And we had this like loft area and we were trying to hang up the welcome home and then it like fell. And then my sister got a broom to sweep the, the thing off, but she dropped the broom and it fell right into our dad's glass cabinet and busted it to busted it up so bad that would be a falling object the the broom is a falling object it fell but it, the thing is that it was inside the house so there would be no coverage for that if it's originating from inside the house so falling objects has to be outside the house now let's talk about collapse collapse kind of has a few different um sticky points to it so first of all, um, keep in mind that you do have the peril of weight, snow, and sleet. The weight of snow and sleet. This one is not quite, so like if you had a bunch of snow and sleet rack up and it causes the house to collapse, that's covered under the peril of, of the weight of snow and sleet, not necessarily under the peril of collapse. When it comes to the peril of collapse, that's when the, the house itself collapses. Now there's a few reasons that a house may collapse. It could be the weight of the stuff, the weight of your belongings, the weight of your belongings. So if you have like two levels, and there's a bunch of stuff on level one and it collapses into level two, that's okay, that is covered under collapse. Um, another part of collapse could be faulty building. Oh, and actually I'm going to put this in a different color because this one is not covered. And what is not covered is faulty construction. Faulty construction. So faulty construction is not covered. It could be a reason that the house collapses, but your homeowners doesn't cover faulty construction. So if it is, if your house does collapse due to faulty construction, you would need to go back to the home manufacturer. And depending on the age of your home, you may or may not be able to do anything, but ultimately faulty construction doesn't fall under the peril of collapse. Another thing that may cause the house to collapse, and this one may or may not be covered, is both known as um, vermin or rot. Vermin or rot. So if you were to have, for instance, termites, that would be vermin, okay? So if vermin are eating up your walls, eating up the wood in your house, and it causes it to collapse, that may or may not be covered. And the same with rot. If the house is rotting, if the wood is rotting and then it causes to collapse, that may or may not be covered. How do we know if it if it is or is not covered? The thing is, is that these are covered if, these are covered if, if it is hidden from view. 
hidden from view. What we're saying here is that if you knew you had termites and you didn't take care of it and the house collapsed, the insurer will not pay the claim. Now, that may be a weird thing to try to have to prove, but we don't need to worry about that for this, the exam. All we need to know is that vermin termites are only covered if the damage they caused was hidden from view. Same with rot. If the house is rotting, the wood is rotting and it, and it makes it fall. If you knew it was rotting, you needed to take care of it. That's part of being a homeowner. That's part of taking care of the house. But if you couldn't see it and there was no way for you to know that it was rotting, like maybe it was happening in the attic, you didn't see it, you were never up there, it's too small of a space, and but it, but it ends up rotting and collapsing. As long as it was hidden from view, then it would be covered under the peril of collapse. So these are just a couple of tricky points that you might see on the exam. And just to clear them up for you, remember falling objects needs to come from outside of the house. They will not cover stuff falling in the house. It needs to come from outside of the house, down onto the house. Collapse, you have the weight of snow and sleet. That itself is a whole separate peril. And so the weight of snow and sleet is covered if it causes things to collapse. And then the other peril of collapse is the weight of your belongings. So if you have too much stuff and it causes the house to collapse, that's okay. Faulty construction, not covered, not okay. And then vermin or rot is only covered if it was hidden from view. So one other thing too about falling objects is it might not just be an airplane. Um, one example that we have seen on the exams could be your neighbor's house is right here and your neighbor may have a tree. If their tree falls on your house, that would be considered a falling object because it's coming from outside the house and your homeowners would cover it under falling objects. But here's something that's really cool. Your neighbor also should have coverage E liability and coverage E liability has property damage on it. And they could also pay for the damage that they caused to your house. And your own homeowners may pay and make the repairs and then they could subrogate, which means go after the responsible third party and use that homeowner's coverage E to pay for the repairs that they made to your house, try to recoup some of their money. So falling objects can include a tree as long as the tree is coming from outside the house. Now, if it is your own tree in your own yard, there has to be a covered peril first, a covered peril first, like lightning striking. So if lightning strikes the tree branch and then the tree branch falls onto the house, it would be covered under the peril of lightning. But just your tree falling onto your roof and onto your house is not covered unless there was something happening first like wind or hail or lightning. But the tree itself, if the tree is just getting old and rotting and you're not taking care of it and then it collapses on the house, that's on you. You've got to take care of that. But if a covered peril like wind or lightning happens to the tree and that's what causes it to break and fall onto your house, then that would be covered under the peril of wind or lightning. So this was just a quick video to give us some insight to falling objects and collapse and some tricky test points that you may see. This is Melissa, the insurance exam queen, sending you all the loves, all the vibes to pass your exam. Have a wonderful day.